three. Welcome back to Empowerment Nursing. I'm Linda and this is Ashley and we are nurse educators. Uh, you are tuning into our series In the Know where we make it simple and today we are simplifying troubleshooting chest tubes. Chest tubes can seem very complicated for a lot of nurse graduates. They are of course overwhelming as nurses must understand why they are inserted, when they're inserted, how they're inserted, all the parts of the chest tube. Um, how they work, everything that could go wrong, how to assess the patient, right? Um, everything we need to take into consideration. And so there's a whole scope of knowledge around what we need to know and a lot of safety concerns, which is why it's a go-to question on the NCLEX and CPNRE exams because there is so much that can go wrong, of course. Let's recap last week's Facebook Live where we discussed why a patient would need a chest tube. Uh, so anytime the lung is partially or fully collapsed, so a pneumothorax or a hemothorax or a motor vehicle accident where there is trauma or a puncture wound like a stab wound or an intentional puncture like a thoracentesis, um, infections could cause this and sometimes the lung collapses spontaneously. All of these would be reasons why a patient needs a chest tube. So now let's let's make it simple <laughs> let's make it simple so we did this demonstration last week i'm just going to do it briefly again if you missed our facebook live last week we invite you to go back because last week we discussed all the different parts of a chest tube and how they work together um, so it's important to watch that video prior to watching this one but just as a recap in case you didn't catch it um, i'm just going to demonstrate why a lung collapses when there's interference within the pleural space as a student i always understood kind of Theoretically, if there's a hemothorax, the lung will collapse and we put a chest tube in to suck the air out so the lung can reinflate, but I didn't really understand how or why. Um, so we came up with this concept to help simplify it for students. So as you know, the lung sits in your chest cavity and it's surrounded by, by a pleural space and the job of this pleural space is to maintain pressures. So the lung can deflate and reinflate without incidence, okay? So this has to remain uninterrupted. If air or fluid or blood or whatever else gets in this pleural space and that pleural space gets bigger, it doesn't allow for the lung to expand. So as an example, if our lung is normally in its pleural space and this pleural space gets a hole in it as a stab wound or what have you, and this fills up with air, that pleural space gets bigger, filling with air or blood or whatever it is, that lung collapses and it cannot, as you can see, um, reinflate. Okay, so in this instance, we would put a chest tube into the pleural space like this, we would hook it up to suction. It would suck the air, the blood, the fluid, the exudate, whatever else out of that pleural space, bringing it back to a normal size and allowing that lung to re-expand. Re and that's how um, a chest tube allows for lung re-expansion. Great. Now we're gonna talk about troubleshooting chest tubes and we're going to go to a page that is out of our textbook um, and we're going to review this. So the insertion, when the lung collapsed, uh, restores normal pressure in pleural space through a one-way removal of air, fluid, or exudate. The upper anterior second intercostal space would be for air. So this is where it would be placed because air rises. And the lower lateral chest, the eighth or ninth intercostal space would be for blood as blood is in the base of the lungs. So if you have both in there, so one for air and one that's down farther down for blood, uh, it would be connected by a Y. So Y connected into a closed drainage system. And it would be sutured in place and it's airtight dressing around the tube site connected to a closed drainage system. How do we assess this? You assess the patient, not the machine. The number one assessment would be to listen to bilateral lungs. There would be daily x-rays to monitor a re-expansion. You would monitor for infection. Uh, you would do deep breathing and coughing. They would be doing incentive spirometry, right, to help the lung re-expand. And you would be recording drainage every one hour for 24 hours, then every eight hours. You would call the doctor if it's greater than 100 mils per hour or there's a change in color because a change in color would be an unexpected finding. And you would monitor oxygenation and vital signs and ensure the dressing 
and the system is airtight. How would we uh, manage this system? Always keep it below the chest, right? As we don't want it to backflow into the lungs, kind of like a catheter bag. Um, never kink the tube. The system must be closed at all times and ensure levels of water are maintained at all times. So let's talk a little bit about interventions. This is probably the most important one on this page because you're gonna have a lot of scenario questions on your registration exam that ask you, what would you do if, those types of questions. So what would you do if the tube gets pulled out? What you would do if the tube gets pulled out, meaning out of the patient's body, is you would put a sterile gauze tape down on three sides. Three being the magic number here. It's very important you don't tape that down on four sides because if you tape it down on four sides, you can cause a tension pneumothorax. Leaving that fourth side open allows air to escape the pleural space. Um, so it's still leaving that pleural space, but it doesn't allow it to re-enter. If the drainage system falls over and the chambers mix together, pick it up. Okay, that's what you would do. Check those chambers and fill the water seal chamber to two centimeters of water. Last week when we talked about the different parts of the drainage um, system, we discussed how that two centimeters of water in the water seal chamber is the most important chamber because it prevents backflow into the pleural space and have the patient deep breathe and cough. If the tubing disconnects, reconnect that tubing as soon as possible. You should have a spare at all times. Normal bubbling and abnormal bubbling. These are super important to understand because it's our experience that often on the registration exam, you're actually given normal findings to see if you will react to something normal, calling a doctor for something that's normal. Um, so you need to understand what is normal bubbling and what isn't. So normal bubbling would be gentle continuous bubbling in the suction chamber when it's on, intermittent bubbling in the water seal chamber if the patient exhales, coughs, or sneezes, the only time bubbling as abnormal is when there is continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber, which indicates a leak in the system. So anything else would be normal and expected. Okay, important down here, never ever clamp a chest tube without a physician's order. This causes a tension pneumothorax and can be life-threatening. So on the registration exam, it's a good rule of thumb, just never clamp the chest tube, okay? And removal of a chest tube for information purposes, the patient takes a deep breath and holds it. This is called the Valsalva maneuver. We pull the chest tube out and then we put pressure over the site and an occlusive dressing over top of that. Okay, so that's it for our mind map. We hope this demonstration with the balloon and the study map from our textbook of troubleshooting chest tubes, it makes troubleshooting chest tubes simple for you. Be sure to tune into our video questions this week where we apply this knowledge and join us next week on In The Know. We invite you to subscribe to our live video feed so you'll be notified if you're on Facebook and we are live online. Like and share this video with your nursing friends and be sure to follow our Facebook page and check out our website at www.n-promenursing.com where you can experience our free trial, um, which is our complete cardiac chapter and also view our complete study package. We'll see you next time on In The Know. Bye, Bye for now. now.